Hi, I'm Don Dawson. In today's program, we're going to discuss how you can prevent bullying and other disruptive behavior from affecting the environment, productivity, and safety in your workplace. Bullying and disruptive behavior often make us think of how children sometimes act. Like a tough kid pushing schoolmates around on the playground, or a classroom nuisance who's always creating a disturbance. While playground bullies and classroom troublemakers eventually grow up, their behavior may not. When they join the workforce, they can continue to bother people. Grown-ups who bully and engage in other forms of disruptive behavior on the job can interfere with the functioning of the workplace, disturb and threaten co-workers, even affect other employees' health. Workplace bullying and disruptive behavior can also increase business costs, decrease productivity, and make it harder for a company to succeed. As a manager, you need to understand these problems so you can effectively prevent or eliminate them. In this program, we'll take a closer look at these types of behavior, the impact they can have on your department, and what steps you can take to stop them. Have you ever worked with a bully? More than 35% of the employees in the U.S. say they have. That means almost 65 million people have had to cope with workplace bullying at some point in their lives. A bully degrades, humiliates, undermines, or intimidates another person by making repeated attacks on them. It's not simply somebody losing their cool on a bad day and barking at a colleague. It's an ongoing pattern of abusive behavior. Bullies often start out by verbally abusing their victims, shouting and swearing at them. They may also exclude their target from interacting with the rest of their group, play practical jokes on them, or pick on them indirectly by spreading rumors behind their back. A bully in a supervisory position may overload their victim with work, then excessively monitor and micromanage them. Bullying in the workplace can also include physical intimidation, escalating into attacks involving pushing, shoving, even slaps and punches. What types of people can be bullies? Basically anyone in and around your organization, man or woman, employee or outsider, could turn out to be a bully. While they may not look different from anyone else, the problems that bullies cause can be serious and far-reaching. They can create stress and anxiety in their victims, even in people who witness their bullying, which can lead to health problems such as high blood pressure, digestive trouble, and ulcers. For almost three quarters of the victims, these symptoms are so serious that they require treatment by a doctor. And nearly two-thirds of bullying victims seek professional help for conditions such as low self-esteem, depression, and insomnia. Workplace bullying isn't only bad for people, it's bad for business, too. It poisons the workplace environment. It undermines the trust workers should feel for your company. And it destroys the teamwork that you've worked so hard to develop. As a result, morale declines and absenteeism rises. Bullying victims and witnesses often end up quitting their jobs, so turnover increases. Your company then has to pay to recruit and train replacements. It may also develop a reputation for being a bad place to work. Workers' compensation claims can increase, and legal expenses can mount up as well. But even with all the damage bullying can cause, it's not illegal in the United States. And you shouldn't assume you will automatically notice any bullying that goes on in your department. Workplace bullies know how to hide what they do. They can be clever and difficult to catch. But that's not all. Bullying is only part of the problem.
It's easy to see how serious bullying can be in the workplace, but it's actually part of a larger problem. A problem called disruptive behavior. This is when people act in ways that disturb normal workplace activities and interfere with their coworkers' ability to get their jobs done. You recognize disruptive behavior when you see it, and often when you hear it. Typically, it involves someone yelling or swearing, waving their arms or shaking their fists, and refusing reasonable requests to calm down or be quiet. Like bullying, these other forms of disruptive behavior are normally not one-time events. They're an ongoing pattern in the way a person acts. And they're more than just distracting and disturbing to bystanders, who often feel frightened or threatened by it as well. No one should be made to feel like this in any environment. That reason alone, disruptive behavior has no place in the workplace. Unfortunately, that knowledge alone won't prevent disruptive behavior from occurring. And when it does, it can have the same effects that bullying has, which is bad for people and bad for business. But there's an even more important reason that you should take steps to address any type of disruptive behavior immediately. Because when nothing is done to intervene and shut down disruptive behavior, it typically gets worse until it eventually results in physical violence. We've seen how workplace bullying can include physical intimidation, and the stakes can be just as high with other forms of disruptive behavior. Its potential for serious violence can make it a tragedy waiting to happen. So it's your responsibility to do everything possible to prevent it, and there are effective ways to do that. The people who work for you are your eyes and ears regarding what happens in your department, and they can be powerful allies in your effort to prevent bullying and disruptive behavior. But to help, they have to understand what these problems involve. So your first step should be to get the subject out on the table. Start raising awareness of bullying and other disruptive behavior in team meetings and training sessions. Explain what these behaviors include and emphasize that there is no excuse for them. If your company has a code of conduct, use it to clarify what is acceptable and unacceptable on the job. Make sure people know that if they ever feel physically threatened, they should call security or 911 immediately. Getting these issues out in the open will put any bullies or other disruptive members of your department on notice that their behavior is not welcome and will not be tolerated. Your next step is to explain what your people can do themselves to prevent these behaviors so that their workplace will be safe, healthy, and productive. Your initial focus should be on shutting down bullies. One option you can discuss is called self-management. This is where the victim takes the initiative and explains to the bully that they've noticed a disturbing pattern in the way the bully acts towards them. They should let the bully know that they think the bully's actions are unprofessional, that it makes them uncomfortable, and that they want it to stop. If this doesn't resolve the issue, or if the victim is apprehensive about trying it, they should report the bullying to you. While you should encourage reporting, you also need to explain that the most effective reports always include documentation and supporting evidence. For example, employees should collect facts about the bullying, what happened, when, where, and who was there in a diary or log. They should also collect any harassing notes or printouts of bullying emails, as well as any other evidence of what has happened. Let them know that solid documentation can make it easier for you to deal with a bully promptly and effectively. Handling other forms of disruptive behavior is different because you often have the opportunity to shut it down before it escalates and becomes dangerous. So it's important that people report any instances of disruptive behavior to you immediately, even if they think it will pass and the perpetrator will soon get back to normal. Once you're apprised of instances of bullying or other disruptive behavior, there are several ways you can handle the situation.
as a manager, you represent the company. So when one of your people comes to you with a report about bullying or a disruptive person in the department, how you respond is very important. You need to show concern and you need to proceed systematically. If you try to wing it, your mistakes could come back to haunt you and your organization. To start, you need to be professional and impartial. Take care to be fair to both sides in the situation, even if it seems obvious who's at fault. Take the report seriously and keep it confidential. Be sure to speak in private with the person who makes it. It's important to treat them with respect and sensitivity so they don't feel penalized in any way for coming forward. Listen carefully. Ask questions. Examine any documentation or physical evidence that they have. Then start your own paper trail by writing up a summary based on the report and the notes you took during the conversation. Make a habit of keeping good records. Don't rely on your memory. Document everything. Note the specifics regarding who, what, where, when, and why. Keep your file up to date and organized. And make sure everything is legible. Rewrite your handwritten notes neatly if necessary. Even better, type them up. But remember to keep the originals. The next step is to take prompt and effective measures to deal with the situation. Once you've done all your homework, you need to move quickly. Let's look at a couple of approaches you can take to handling a disruptive situation. You've received a complaint about one of your people. Their on-the-job behavior has raised some concerns, but no one's ever complained about them before. And their misbehavior isn't really that serious. It could be just a one-time thing. What should you do? Sometimes an informal response is best. A quiet word with a problem employee may be all it takes to resolve the situation. The setting you choose for the conversation can be very important. It should be private enough so both of you can talk openly but still feel relaxed. For example, you might want to talk over coffee in the cafeteria if it's not crowded. Other options could be talking while driving to the work site, at the shop counter when things are slow, or in the break room before the start of the workday. Let the employee know you want to give them a heads up because you've gotten wind of some behavior of theirs that concerns you. Explain what it is that you've heard, then listen to their side of the story. Be supportive, but make sure the employee understands that there are behaviors that just aren't acceptable on the job. If it looks like stress is part of the problem, you might suggest some ways they could handle high-pressured work situations better. This informal approach minimizes the risk of putting the employee on the defensive, so they're better able to relate to what you say and respond constructively to it. Sometimes you can get good results by keeping things simple. There are times, though, that while you may need to be supportive of the employee, you don't want to be too friendly. It's easy to make your approach a shade more serious. Just have your meeting in your office with the door closed during normal business hours. Be sure to have the complaint file on your desk where the employee can see it. This level of response is sometimes called an awareness intervention. Depending on the circumstances surrounding the situation, it may be more appropriate than an informal conversation. Whatever type of meeting you have, you need to allow some time for the employee to make changes while keeping your eyes and ears open. You should also check with the person who originally made the complaint and ask them if they've noticed an improvement. If the answer is yes, you can file your notes on the situation and get back to business. But if the answer is no, you may have to conduct a formal investigation regarding the complaint. There are several types of situations that call for a formal investigation. If the reported misbehavior is serious, if multiple reports are made about the same problem, if the offending employee is uncooperative when you approach them informally, 
or if they show no improvement after an initial conversation. When you conduct a formal investigation into a complaint about bullying or other disruptive behavior, you're not trying to just figure out what's going on. You're establishing the facts for the record, so you have solid support for any decisions you make based on what you learn. Throughout your inquiry, it's crucial for you to remain objective and impartial. Any show of bias could be disastrous. Begin with the fundamentals. Have the person who made the original report review your summary of the complaint. They should then sign it to indicate that they feel it's accurate. The next step is to provide a copy of the report to the accused. Give them time to read it and consider it before you go over it with them. Once they've had some think time, sit down and review the complaint with them. You need to get their side of the story. Address each point thoroughly. After you talk with them, create a summary of their responses. Then have them read and sign it. This summary, along with the original report, will help you to identify other people in the workplace you can interview to gather more information. Next, contact any people who have been identified as witnesses to get their take on the situation. Explain the investigation and interview process with them. Make sure everyone understands that they need to be truthful and that the investigation must be kept confidential. Explain that no retaliation will be tolerated for their talking with you and that if any occurs, they should inform you immediately. Your goal during these interviews is to get clear and accurate information. Keep your mind open, do not be judgmental. Don't ask your questions off the cuff. You'll get better results if you write them out ahead of time. Get the facts about what people saw and heard, not their opinions or impressions. Avoid leading questions that suggest the answer you're looking for. Listen carefully and take notes. Don't jump to any conclusions while you're still gathering information. Wait until you complete your inquiry, then consider what you've learned. Be prepared to find that there's no clear result. Even the best investigation can be inconclusive. Or you may decide that no wrongdoing actually occurred. Situations where there's no guilty party show why it's so important to approach every situation with an open mind and treat everyone fairly and with respect. Because prejudging the accused before all the facts are in is not only unjust, it could also result in them filing a grievance against you and the company. Whatever the results of the investigation, you should always consult company policies to see how they apply to the case, if at all. Then present your findings to the complainant and accused with the same objectivity and sensitivity you have used with them throughout. If you do determine that a case of bullying or other disruptive behavior exists, your next step should be to shut it down. When an investigation determines that a serious problem does exist, you normally have a couple of options for how to proceed. The first of these is called an authority intervention. An authority intervention is still supportive of the offending employee, but you use your authority as a manager to provide them with more guidance in resolving their behavioral problem, charting a path with them that they must follow. Part of this process includes developing an improvement and evaluation plan. The plan will specify the behaviors that need to be corrected, establish a timeline for improvement, specify where the employee can get additional help if they need it, and discuss what will happen if the goals of the plan aren't met. Hopefully a structured approach like this will get the employee back on track. But if the goals that are set up during an authority intervention are not met, what usually happens next is called a disciplinary intervention. The name speaks for itself. Disciplinary intervention can typically include a loss of privileges, a demotion, reduced pay, or probation. In a worst case scenario, the employee could be terminated. Keep in mind that any type of workplace intervention may be unable to help with some behavior problems, 
such as those resulting from substance abuse or a psychological condition. While all the procedures we've discussed have built-in opportunities for an employee to cooperate and shape up, sometimes they just don't work. In these cases, you may have no option other than to remove an employee who is unable or unwilling to behave professionally from the workplace. No one wants things to go this far, but zero tolerance is the only sensible attitude towards bullying and other disruptive behavior. As we've seen, keeping your department a safe and productive place can be a challenge when bullying and other disruptive behaviors make an appearance. But there are effective steps that you and your people can take to shut down unprofessional and disturbing conduct. Let's review. Workplace bullying and other disruptive behavior can upset and threaten the people in your workplace, prevent them from getting their jobs done, and even impact their health and safety. An important first step in dealing with disruptive behavior is to raise awareness of it and show people how they can help bring these behaviors to an end. When you receive a report about bullying or other disruptive behavior, you must act quickly to address the issue. But your response must demonstrate fairness and concern as well. Sometimes an informal response or awareness intervention will be all it takes to solve the problem. More serious cases of disruption may require a formal investigation in order to handle the issue properly. During the investigation, it's crucial that you remain impartial and are fair to both sides. If an investigation shows that intervention is necessary, different levels of response are open to you, depending on how cooperative the offending employee chooses to be. Workplace bullying and other disruptive behavior are serious problems. But if you recognize them and take steps to prevent them, you can protect the health, safety, and productivity of everyone in your department.